So I have just arrived from the post office with this bag here from the United States. It is the assembly kit for uh, the DIY uh, open source controller, otherwise known as the Cougar controller. Uh, I have bought it from Paul and Sabina's uh, EV shop in the United States. Um, and I've just got it home. I still have my hat on. I've just come in from outside. Um, Capacitors. And plug. PCB. Nothing. Hmm, I hope it's chocolate. Okay. Here we have the uh, PCB. Um, there's these little numbers here that are standing here. Um, please explain us what we are going to put in. We will start with putting the uh, resistors in. That is all those numbers that begins with an R, except for uh, the ground resistors. Will because they'll need to connect with the power board. So we will wait with them until uh, the very end. Um, here we have like a number R27 um, and that number also appears down here R27 here so what we need is just to unwrap this little resistor and put bend the legs so it will fit nicely into these little holes and then solder it with uh, the soldering iron here see little, these little metal uh, rings there's something black against them and then there's something lighter um, that mustn't be breached that little black thing because that's insulation and there is a reason for it to be there um, so what we want when we solder is we want a nice clean soldering here that is only affecting only soldering connecting to uh, the little light uh, metal thing here the metal ring so we don't want any of the solder to be outside here is a good example here it's it's not bridged in any way when we have done our soldering we can um, oh here where's my ply here it is um, we can clip off this is standard when you're soldering Cri clip off uh, the excess part of the legs that is sticking out now I'm almost done soldering in the resistors I just need this little trimmer resistor that's the last one I'm going to be soldering in fits in right here and then I'll be moving on to the capacitors Capacitors, um, they are just soldered in the same way uh, as the resistors, except for electrolytic capacitors, um, like this little feather fella here. And the thing about them is that you gotta, they are di directional, so you can't just place them any way you want. See this little band 
here with uh, minuses on it. It's going to point in the opposite direction of the little plus on the board. You can also see the same thing here. So the minus stripe that's going to be towards this direction. Now it's the diodes and they are in this special wrapping. That's why I removed my sweater. Better not stroke the cat before we mess on with them because they are a bit sensitive to static electricity. And another thing what's worth noticing whoops, is that there is a little band towards the bottom of the diode and on the board here there's also made a little band where the diodes are going to sit and that just has to uh, match up to because they are directional ok now it's time for the LEDs um, and also the transistors um, go here and for them there is pretty much the same rule, there is a flat side on an LED also a flat, flat side on a transistor and the flat side just mimics the flat turns turns against the flat side on the board. Now I have finished this here low voltage board, so I'm doing this little painstaking job of attaching these cramps here to this wire so that I'll go into this um, outlet here be connected here to the board. Hooray, you did it! Okay, so now the control board is done. And what we can do now to test it is that we can take the thick red and black wire and connect them to 12 volts. And if everything has been connected the way it is supposed to, the little yellow light should start flashing. I thought it was some kind of problem with it because only the green uh, lamp was lighting and the yellow one wasn't flashing or wasn't, li wasn't lighting at all. But then at the end after uh, some correspondence with Paul, the uh, creator of the kit, um, uh, I, f I found out that it was just because my power supply, it was from 
uh, two uh, sealed lead acid batteries, um, and they have all uh, been uh, they were close to being worn flat. It was only five volts of them, so it was a natural reaction from the board to just uh, shut down uh, because of the low voltage. So what I um, I uh, uh, then did was that I hooked it up to this old faithful uh, lab ben bench test I have and uh, gave it 12 volts and everything just worked the way it was supposed to. That was a major relief. Uh, but then there is another test of the control board which I think is a good little test. You can um, hook up all, like hook up this uh, current sensor here and um, the uh, and and the and the pot box, the throttle also, and from uh, the ground, the holes for the ground resistors, these GR10 to GR1, uh, hook one connection to um, a voltmeter and another to PH2 or PH1, either one of them doesn't matter, and then check that in the beginning there is no volt voltage because. Um, this uh, the um, uh, the pot box hasn't been activated, but as soon as you activate the pot box, the volt starts climbing, and that is uh, a sign that uh, the thing is working as it's supposed to.